Hello all, and thanks for stopping by to check out my too long didn't read guide for the Elemental Shaman. Quick note, these are my recommendations for a basic starting point, so feel free to take it or leave it. It's up to you. So with this particular guide, we're going to Tarantino it a bit and start at the end, because everything you will look for will be dependent on your talent build. There are quite a few very different yet all viable Elemental Shaman builds based on what you need to do, your gear, and your skill level. We're going to focus on a good all-around starter build here, since that's obviously a good place to start. So for your talents, level 15 will be Totem Mastery. This is a very potent talent and is taken in almost all situations. For level 30, you've got a couple mobility or utility option. I personally roll with Gust of Wind as it's a short cooldown and will certainly save your bacon from time to time. For level 45, it's a crowd control roll. I always roll Lightning Surge as you never know when that AoE stun will come in handy. Level 60 will be Aftershock. The Maelstrom refund allows you to spam more Earth Shocks or Earthquakes, which can add up to a lot of DPS really fast. Level 75 will be Elemental Blast. It provides a big chunk of damage and nice little buffs. For level 90, we're going to go with Echo of Elements, as it's your best bet and will add a lot of DPS. And finally, for level 100, we're going to go with Lightning Rod. Now, this talent is more useful in AoE or Cleave scenarios for sure, but it isn't a huge single target loss since we went with Echo of Elements. If you really want to push single target, you simply swap Lightning Rod to Ascendance and you'll see an increase in your DPS. However, if you do that, your stat priorities change a bit, and what I'm about to list will be based on Lightning Rod. So with that said, let's get into those secondary stat priorities. Elemental Shamans using this build will want to focus on crit, then haste, and mastery and versatility are kind of equal. So now with that being said, the gems you're going to aim for is essentially the 200 crit deadly deep shimmerine in all your sockets as critical strike is currently more valuable than intellect. For your enchants, it's mark of the claw on your neck, binding of intellect on your cloak, and binding of critical strike on your rings. For your consumables, you're going to go with prolonged power in all situations. Your flask, of course, is whispered pack for the added intellect. For your food, the lavish Suramar feast, of course, if no feast, use the hungry magister food for the crit instead. Also, carry a couple of healing pots and runes for good measure. So now finally we come to the relics. Elemental Shaman Relics can be a bit hairy, but a good rule of thumb is Elemental Destabilization is your best all-around relic, followed up by Earthen Attunement, Lava Imbued, and Molten Blast. If you have something else that adds plus 3 or 4 weapon eye level, that's probably going to be a better option though. Anyways, with all that information out of the way, let's get on to how we actually play the Elemental Shaman. The rotation isn't all that complicated, and it's definitely a class I would suggest to a newer player. To start things off, make sure that your totems are down all the time, and that if you move, you simply recast. Also, make sure Flame Shock never falls off your target or targets if you're in a 2 or 3 cleave situation. After that, it's Elemental Blast on cooldown, Fire Elemental on cooldown, which can be delayed slightly if you have a big haste buff like Bloodlust or Heroism coming up, Earth Shock if you have really high Maelstrom, about 110 or higher, Lava Burst to conserve Lava Surge procs or if you have two charges, and finally spam Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning depending on the number of enemies as filler and to build your Maelstrom. This is a really simplified and basic overview of your spells to be honest. One subtle bit that I would like to mention would be to make sure to only use Stormkeeper, which is your artifact ability, if you know you're going to be able to use all three charges quite quickly. This will help you to maximize the usefulness of the spell. Outside of that we have a few cooldowns to touch on, er, well really we essentially wrap them all into the how to part, so I guess we could mention Bloodlust and Heroism. Usually your raid leader will call for this during a high point in the fight. If you are expected to know when to use it, do the research since every fight can be different. As well, you can use Earth Elemental more so for fun than anything, provided your Flame Elemental is not currently active. Doesn't really do a ton of damage, but hey, every little bit helps. A couple other spells worth a quick mention that you should have on your bar would be Ghost Wolf, which is your primary movement ability, Wind Shear, being your interrupt, Astral Shift, which is a nice little survivability cooldown, Thunderstorm, which is a nice AoE knockback if you have mobs on you, Earthquake, which is a good AoE spell if adds are clumped, and finally Purge. Purge isn't used a whole lot currently, but the occasional encounter will allow you to remove a magical buff from a target. Anyways, with that said, we are all done. If you'd like the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more guides in the future, and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.